Hopefully now, most of you, if not all of you, have a speech topic. So while we're talking about creating and using visual aids, hold that topic in your head and start thinking about what things you can use um, to make your topic really stand out and help it be really memorable. Okay? So for your speeches, you, you don't have to have a visual aid. You'll still get marked if you don't. But there are marks awarded for your visual aid, so you should bring one um, and get those marks. And it'll really help your speech anyway, and it'll help you, as we'll talk about. So, two big reasons why we recommend using visual aids. So the first one is that it helps communicate to your audience. So a lot of your audience uh, will be visual learners. Seeing things will help them learn. Uh, it'll help them remember to think back later on that oh, there was that picture or there was that model or there was that video, and they'll remember that and be able to remember the content of your speech. And also, particularly in technical industries, often things are tricky to explain and much easier to just show with a diagram. Yeah, If you're talking about something relatively complex that you can diagram really well, it's easier to put a diagram on a PowerPoint and explain that to people than it is to kind of try and get it to imagine it in their head. So visual aids can be really useful for your audience, but they can also be really useful for you. So they act as a prompt. So what that means is that when you look at them, if you've made them well, they'll remind you about what you want to be saying and about your topic. So it's like an extra set of notes. And it helps you look well prepared, like you've thought things through and you're professional, especially if you sort of format them well and put logos and things which you don't have to do for this speech because you're students, not a company, but later on in life it can really help. So, but they help, they act as a prompt, and they remind you, and they're really good when you're answering questions. You can refer back to them or go back to them and use them to sort of help explain ideas. So they're useful for your audience and they're useful for you. So we really recommend you use them. So for these speeches and in life, your visual aid could be a PowerPoint, um, you could draw on the whiteboard if your um, object or if you're talking about like a thing and it's kind of small and portable, you could bring it into class and let people see it. If you're talking about fear and you throw a spider at me, you will get a zero as previously discussed. Don't bring spiders to class. But if you have to, then fine. Um, it could be an image, so pictures, plans, drawings, sketches, diagrams. Uh, it could be a video. Um, for this speech, you want to think about how long your video is. If your video is five minutes long, it's going to make it very difficult for you to get marks on how well you talked or looked at your audience because you just played a video the whole time. Um, it could be an activity that you get people to do, so kind of a visual kinetic aid. Or it could be pretty much anything else that you think about. So uh, you could come in a costume if you wanted, if that was going to be relevant and helpful. So your visual aid could also be technical. So it could be um, a diagram or a drawing of the thing you're talking about. It could be summative. So particularly um, if you've got lots of ideas, then having like a diagram that ties them all together is good. Or your visual aid could be funny. You just need to make sure that if it's funny, it's funny in a way that people will remember your topic, not just like remember the funny picture you put up and then be like, what was he even talking about? Um, so if, it, if it's funny, and again, if, you know, if it's funny, just check it's appropriate. It's not going to offend anyone even by accident and that it's helpful for your speech overall. Okay, so to be effective, though, a visual aid has to be relevant. So whatever medium you choose, whatever you do, it needs to be relevant to your topic. It needs to be informative, so it needs to help your audience understand better or remind them of part of it. It needs to be professional, so it can be funny and professional, but you, know, you could also use something that's funny and very unprofessional. Don't do that. And so a good way of testing if it's professional or not is probably, would I show this to someone who's thinking about hiring me? And if the answer is no, you probably want to rethink it. It needs to be appropriate, so you just need to think about if you could um, offend or upset someone, even unintentionally, if that's not your intention, um, or if you're not offended by it, but it's possible other people are, just be wary. And it needs to be accessible. So what we mean by that is that people in the audience need to be able to see it, so like physically get the visual, and also understand it. So you want to think about, if you're using like a PowerPoint, about how big things are, if you're using a model, about whether everyone can see it, and then also whether everyone can understand it. So if you're talking about a topic that your audience doesn't know a lot about, 
you want to make your visual aid not too technical. Otherwise, your audience won't be able to understand it and it won't really help them. So it won't be informative and memorable for them. It'll just be confusing. So think about how accessible it is in terms of like physically, can I see it? And also, can I understand it, Luke? No, so this remote is just like a menu remote, but I'll see if the office has one of the good can click through the slide remotes and has the laser. Can your smartphone turn into a laser? That seems unlikely if there's not a laser built into it. Yeah, you can just bring one from home. Okay, so some other stuff to think about. And this is why part of what we'll do in the second practice week, if you bring your visual aid, you can get some feedback from your peers about things like, is it big enough? So can it be seen? Is it too big or too distracting? So if your video that you want to use is like really colorful or really eye-catching, maybe it will be too distracting if you're trying to talk at the same time. If it's just like it's something moving around so that you can see it from all sides, it might be fine. Um, you need to think about particularly, can you read the words um, if you're using words? So part of that's thinking about color. So you need to make sure that the colors are readable, but not like painfully bright to look at. So something that's comfortable for people and the contrast between colors um, will help make it readable or sort of uncomfortable as well. So not next week, but the week after, if you bring your visual aid with you, you can have a go at putting it on the screen and sitting at the back and saying, can I see this? Can I read it all fine and get some feedback from people about it? It'd be a really good opportunity. We're going to think about balance. So does it look like pleasing? Will people like looking at it? Um, are there too many words or too many pictures so it's really crowded? Or is it just mostly blank space so it looks kind of awkward? Um, there's quite a lot of text on this slide. I wouldn't put more than that on anything you're presenting. Um, unless you were using like a, a quote maybe that was really big and you wanted people to be able to read it. But this is sort of probably maximum words on a slide. Otherwise, it gets too intense. Um, you want to make sure, particularly if you're doing a presentation like on behalf of a workplace or a company, that your stuff has the right logos and that the format doesn't sort of change partway through. So it's kept consistent and professional and it helps people and that it's really carefully proofread. So, practically speaking, you want to think about the overall impact that your visual aid will have on your audience. So, will it have a positive impact or a negative impact? So, stuff around, like, how much time does it take up? If it's just going to show up for, like, three seconds and then go away again, is it worth having? Will that add anything? Um, if it's going to take up five minutes of your speech and then you don't get to talk about the thing that it's meant to be supporting, will have a negative impact overall. So you want to think about time and about how um, memorable it will be and whether it'll be memorable for the right reasons. So when people remember your visual aid, will they then remember what you were actually talking about and the information that you're trying to give, or they just remember the visual aid and nothing else? So think about, about how relevant and informative and memorable it is. Okay. And then it's really important how you choose to use your visual aid or not. So some things you should do are explain it to the audience. Don't just put it up on the screen and assume that everybody understands it and don't say anything. Particularly if it's like a technical thing or a model with moving parts, explain it. Tell us about it. Yep. So like if it's just a picture of a fish. And nobody need you like so so and, and everyone could look at that and say that is a picture of a fish. You still want to explain why it's relevant. So if, if it's just so simple that everybody can look at it and understand it and it doesn't add anything or give any new information or help anyone, then it may not be worth having in there at all, because it just becomes a random picture. So if it's if that's the case, you want to think about whether you need it or not. The explanation might not have to be very big. You're, you're probably right, but it depends on what you're doing. Yep, go. Um, what if your visual aid includes how much work? So if it like if it's explained by a label, yep. then you're probably okay in terms of explaining, but you still need to do a lot of this other stuff about referring to it and talking about it. Yep. But so you could, if it was a simple picture, you could, it could be explained with a label. You might not have to say, 
This is a picture of a fish. Yeah. Very nice. Um, class is scheduled to be in this room, so probably this room. Yeah. Um, okay, so explain it, unless it's labelled as the explanation, in which case you might get away with it. Make sure you give your audience time to look at it and understand it. If you've got slides and you need to flick through them really fast to get through them all, you have too many. You need to be able to give your audience time to understand what, what the picture is, especially because they haven't seen it before. So you know what it is because you've seen it and worked with it. They don't, and they need time to learn that. Use your visual aid when you're answering questions. So at the end of your speeches, there'll be question opportunity. Um, and when people ask you questions, if one of your visual aids is relevant, show it to them. Use it to help explain things. You need to interact with it. So even if it's a really obvious visual aid, if it is a picture of a fish and it is labelled here as a fish, you still need to interact with it, refer to it, and use it. So if you just put something up on the screen and then ignore it the whole time, it's not really tied in with your speech. It doesn't help much. And then make sure that it enhances your speech overall. So if it's just a picture of a fish, like if it's a special type of fish and your speech is about special types of fish, then it's good. But then you need to explain, here is the special type of fish. Here is what makes it special. You see how it looks different to the other boring type of fish. So you will be explaining using your visual aid. So don't just put a whole bunch of stuff up on the screen and read it. You can usually assume, particularly at Polytech or an industry, that most people in your audience are fairly literate. And if all you're going to do is put words on the screen and read them, then you may as well just have handed them the slides and let them do it in their own time with a cup of coffee. Okay? Don't just put a whole bunch of stuff on the screen and read it. Don't ignore your visual aid or fail to reference it at all. So if you put a picture up or you put a model out or you do something and then you don't talk about it at all, it's not tied into your speech and it's not going to help people remember your speech. So you, you need to mention it and tie it in. Yep. Yep. So ideally, you'd put just like you did in your technical reports, source, and then put the source, and then you can have a reference slide at the end. I don't mind if the reference slide is only up for like 10 seconds at the end. We don't need a minute to read your references or anything. If you're using lots of stuff like that, then source, and just put the quick source, and then the reference list at the end. Do you find? So also don't just flick your visual aid up really quickly and expect your audience to automatically understand it. So you need to explain it, particularly if it's technical. So we're going to do an exercise 